Hello everyone, my name is Zunitsu, and I'm back with another deck profile. This time, it's going to be an Ancient World deck using the new Dual Jaegers. I felt that the best buddy for most Dual Jaeger decks is going to be Apprentice Underling, Kon Kon Gong. The only reason why I feel like this card is one of the best, if not the best buddy, is because it's a searcher. So you get to look at the top three, choose uh, a size three or Dragon Chief Emperor, and put that into your hand and drop the rest. Just a very simple search effect. So as such, we run four of the buddy. Then we run four Great Pirate Captain Kaido. So this card's really good because with Dual Jaeger out, it's basically a size zero. And then you could pay one gauge to return a card from the soul to the owner's hand. So he's pretty good at attacking the opponent's soul if you have just excess gauge, or if you really want to try to like utilize some of the utility of your Dragon Chief Emperor cards, you could put it from the soul back to the hand. Otherwise, he's just a size zero, really good card for Dragon Chief Emperors. Next, we run four copies of Chief of Healing, Healing Rin. So if you have a size three Dragon Chief Emperor, you basically discard this card, you charge a gauge, gain a life, and put the top card of your deck into the soul of a monster. So it's most likely going to be a dual Jaeger. So it's just really good at gaining gauge, gaining soul, and healing you for one. Next, we run four copies of... Uh, Chief of Steel, Iron Tetsu. Basically, if you have a size 3 Dragon Chief Emperor on your field, you could discard this card from your hand, pay 1 gauge, nullify the attack, and gain 1 life. We run 1 Underling Battery Den. We run Den because when a Dual Jaeger attacks, if he's in the soul, you can charge a gauge. So the deck's really heavy on gauge usage, so just having him in the deck to be able to charge gauge, is it just helps a lot. Uh, like Den, we run Underling Say for a similar reason. So he has a similar effect where you can pay a life and then put him from your hand in the soul of a size 3 Dragon Chief Emperor. And then while he's in the soul, the Dragon Chief Emperor can't be destroyed by my opponent's card effects. So he just helps keep the Dual Jaeger alive. Next, we run four copies of Seeker of Superior Strength Dual Jaeger. I think this is one of the best base Dual Jaegers we can possibly run, and we run it mostly because of its counteract ability. So its counteract ability is you can choose a size 3 Dragon Chief Emperor monster other than this card from your drop zone, discard a card, and you basically call it over him for free, which is really strong because you could attack two times and then use his counteract ability, call a new Du Jaeger, and you could attack more. So speaking of attacking more, we run four copies of Sea Braved Unmatched Dual Jaeger Tempest. This is one of the more recent Dual Jaeger forms. I think it's really, really strong. Its call cost is you could put it on top of a Dragon Chief Emperor size 3 and pay 3 gauge. Most of the time you're going to want to try to mill yourself to use its ability to basically call it for free. When this card enters the field, put 6 cards from your drop into its soul. So it's going to have a really big soul, including the cards from Dual Jaeger. So it's going to have a lot of cards in its soul. So it's going to be very tanky. And then on top of that, when this card's in the center, you just don't take effect damage from your opponent's card effects. It stops penetrate, it stops burn, on top of which he's really big, really tanky, and he gets quadruple attack. So just between these two, you'll already be attacking six times in a single turn. Next, we run four copies of Searing Overturn Chief Dual Jaeger Dynamite Kai. So this is the newest form of Dual Jaeger, and I think it's really, really strong, considering you can call it on top of your other attacks. So its counter ability is if you've attacked three times with just with cards on your field, you can call this card from your hand by paying its call cost. Then it has an overturn ability. You can pay one life, and during your attack phase, for this turn it gets plus one crit, and this card's attack can't be nullified and its damage can't be reduced. He'll be a four crit triple attacker, on top of the fact that you're probably have already supposed to attack at least six times prior, so he has triple attack, so he'll get an extra three attacks, so that'll be nine attacks with the full combo out. So some of you are thinking, wait, 
This one has lifelink loss. That means if I call over it, that means I would auto lose the game. Well, there's a card I'll show you later where it can get around the lifelink loss so that the full combo can be set up. So that's it for the monsters of the deck. Into the spells, we run four copies of a Dragon's Will. So you can only cast this if you have a size three and you're being attacked. You nullify the attack and you put the top card of your deck into your gauge. We run two copies of Ocean Chief Spirit. This just gives us another attack with a dual Jaeger. Next, we run four copies of Dragon Within the Ocean. So this is just a dual Jaeger search card. You just search for any of the dual Jaegers. Most of the time, I use it to search out Seeker of Strength or Searing Overturned Chief, just because I can use their abilities to more effect on my attacking phase more than Sea Brave. So Sea Brave is a card you just want to like discard or mill, and these are the cards that you'd rather see in your hand so you can play them and then start your attack combo chain. Next, we run two copies of Dragon Emperor Legend. This is a staple in almost every Ancient World deck. It's basically a charge one, gain one life, draw one card. Next, we run two copies of Dragon Soul Infusion. This is a good card to help us mill so we put the top two cards of our deck into our drop zone. If you have a Dragon Chief Emperor among them, put the top card of your deck into your gauge and draw one card. So it's similar to that of Dragon Emperor Legend, except it's milling us instead of gaining off life, which in, in Duel Jaeger, it's a important thing to have some self-milling. Next, we run two copies of Rise and Fall of Dragons. So this is a really good card because you pay two life at counter speed. You can basically charge four gauge. So it's most important to use this card in combination with Dynamite Kai because you have to pay his call cost when calling him on your attack step. Next, we run probably the most important card in the deck, four copies of Deluge of Life. So this card is a really good card in Duel Jaeger because when... We basically put a card from our deck into our drop zone. We can draw a card. We mostly use it for its counter ability, where it just has the ability to nullify lifelink. That's the main reason why we run it, because that gets around the lifelink loss on Tempest. So the full setup is you have, you would ideally have two Kaidos, one on your left, one on your right. You'd have a Seeker of Superior Strength, Dual Jaeger, in your center. So you'd attack with him, uh, stand him, Get his double attack, use his counter ability to play Sea Brave from your drop, attack four times with him, and if they're still not dead, you can counter call into overturn, and then you just pop the Deluge of Life to call him over Tempest to ignore the lifelink loss, and then you get triple attack with a higher crit. So he's like really good at helping closing out games. So that's it for the main deck. I do have some other cards you could possibly run with the deck. So you could run Loyalty. Most of the time, you're just going to be using it for the stopping the opponent from calling past their third monster. You could run the original Dynamite, just because he's similar to Kai, where you can call him on your attack step. He has quadruple attack. Then you could run... Great Ocean High King Dual Jaeger. This is a really good base card also if you feel like you want to run it. But this is a really good one because when this card enters the field, you could discard a card from your hand and put a Dragon Chief Emperor from your drop zone into your hand. So it just helps fix your hand a bit. You could also run Sturdy Dragon Strike. You could search for two Ancient World monsters from your deck, put them into your drop zone, shuffle your deck, and then charge a gauge. It's, this card's really good at putting Tempest in the drop zone, so that way you could call over him, and it gains you a gauge. You could also run Reflection Dragon Moon. So for paying one life, you put the top card of your deck into your gauge, and put one size 3 Dragon Chief Emperor from your drop zone into your hand. So the whole idea with this card is usually to use Sturdy Dragon Strike to gain a gauge and mill the card you want. Uh, combos with Deluge of Life. And then you use Reflection Dragon Moon to basically just add it back to your hand. So you basically like draw it between the two. And then you, with Deluge of Life, you get an extra draw off of it. So it's pretty good. You could also run Dragonic Determination. You can only cast this card if you have a monster with Dual Jaeger in its name, which obviously the whole point is to have a Dual Jaeger out. 
and then you basically get to put the top two cards of your deck into your gauge and gain two life. It's just another way of gaining gauge. You could also run on the same boat as a hazardous dragon. This is just a pretty decent card for one life. You could put the top card of your deck into your gauge and put a monster from your drop into the soul of an item or monster. So it just helps refill the soul. Then you could run four copies of Dragon Blessing. So this is just another card that can ignore lifelink. If you really want to run an item, you could run Pulse Headgear. So it could attack through the center, and you could put two cards from your deck into your drop zone. If a Dragon Chief Emperor is among them, you could put the top two cards of your deck into your gauge. So it just charges your gauge. Another item you can possibly run is... Ocean Emperor's Anchor, Wild Wave. So this is another card that can attack through the center, and then it has a counter ability. You could pay a gauge and a life. If you do put this card in the soul of a Dragon Chief Emperor, the card in the soul is a Dragon Chief Emperor, it gets Penetrate. So it's really good for this deck. Again, I just had a hard time squeezing in items, but the idea is you attack with it, and then you put it into the soul of your Dragon Chief Emperor, and then the rest of them throughout the combo chain would have Penetrate. You could also run Fortune Dragon. So this is just a good staple in Ancient World. If you have a size 3 monster, you could discard this card and you charge 2. So what's cool about this card is it's not a once per turn ability. So you could discard it, put it into the soul, use Kaido's ability, put it from the soul into your hand, and then charge 2 again. So it's just really good at gaining gauge. You could also run Wicked Dragon of Fabrication. So this is just the, the similar to Fortune Dragon, except instead of gaining you gauge, you pay gauge and you nullify a spell. So it's just a spell nullifier. And then you could also run Chief of Arms under the Ken. So this is just another generic put it into the soul kind of card. Uh, the deck does have a potential setup for an OTK, uh, I just found it, it, including it in is a little inconsistent, but if you really wanted to do an OTK kind of setup, you run Overturn Chief Duel Jaeger, so it gets plus one crit for each monster in its soul, and then you could discard a card from your hand and basically put five soul into it. So the idea would be just to figure out a way to give it as much soul as humanly possible, and then just swing on your first turn. Uh, I just, again found it in this kind of a deck, it's a little hard of a setup to do. It is possible, but it's a little hard to do. But if you really wanted to run the OTK, another good card to run with it would be the Dragon Emperor card, where you basically just discard a card, pay a gauge, and you can stand up the chosen card. So if you really wanted to go for like even more attacks, you could run him. If you really wanted to give Penetrate to one of your monsters, you could run Guru Bunbuku. So he's pretty good because you can discard this card from your hand, pay a gauge, and for this turn, the chosen card gets plus 3,000 power, plus 3,000 defense, one crit, move, and penetrate. That's it for the Dual Jaeger deck. It was a lot of fun to make and test, and I hope you guys consider building your own variant of a Dual Jaeger deck because he's really fun to play against and to play with. I hope you like and subscribe for more content, and I will see you in the next video.